Hi, welcome back to Data Literacy 101. If you are a returning viewer, you can skip the introduction. If you are a first time viewer, hi, welcome to Data Literacy 101, a series of short videos about fundamental topics around data literacy, such as open data, data ethics, and working with data. You generally don't need any technical background for the videos to be useful. This is for you if you want to know how data and data literacy can be applied in your everyday life and in the work that you do, especially if you're a journalist, you're working for a civil society organization, you're a civil servant looking to upskill yourself, or just a regular citizen interested in data. But before we start, a word of caution. The fields of data and data literacy are vast and nuanced, and the videos can only provide a fraction of all the available knowledge and information about the topic. However, we can still provide a general overview and a good foundation for you to start on. The videos are based on the Data Literacy 101 website, and if you want to learn more, you can visit the link on the screen or in the video description. With that said, let's proceed to this week's topic. Machine readable data. So what does it mean when we say that data is machine readable? Well, in the context of using data to solve problems, Machine readability does not simply mean openable by a computer. Any digital file can be opened by a computer, but not all files are easily usable for the purposes of computing statistics or making graphs. Which is why for a file to be considered machine readable, then it should allow for the easy extraction, processing, and analysis of the data that it contains. For example, if I have a file that has a table of values, there should be an easy and straightforward way for me to get the sum or the average of the values, filter rows based on the values, or sort the table based on column values. Spreadsheets and other tabular representations of data are the most common example of machine readable data. Other structured data formats are also considered machine readable. Let's take a look at some of these common machine-readable data formats. First is the comma-separated value or CSV file. Now don't be scared if this is your first time hearing about CSVs. They are just essentially text files formatted in a way that allows you to easily store tabular data. More specifically, they are delimited text files whose delimiter or the character used to separate fields or columns of a table is a comma, hence the name comma separated values. Before we proceed, let's take a closer look at this CSVs. So if you remember the tabular data we had in episode one, with the name, age, civil status, sex, and location of a person, it's CSV representation is going to be something like this. Each row of the CSV will still represent one observation. The first row is still going to be the names of the fields. Meanwhile, the columns or fields that represent the attributes, the descriptions, or the var variables about the observation are separated from each other using a comma. Now you may ask what happens if your value has a comma in it, say for example, an address. Well, that's a story for another video. A CSV is great because it is a non-proprietary format that almost all applications, both free and open source and proprietary alike, can actually use and open. So you can take tabular data from a proprietary application convert it to a CSV, and have the data read by other applications such as LibreOffice Calc, OnlyOffice Spreadsheet, MS Excel, 
Google Sheets, etc. Aside from CSVs, there are other forms of delimited text files based on the separator that they use. Tab separated values or TSVs use tabs. Technically speaking, you can use any delimiter to separate your fields in a text file and have it be read as a table as long as you are consistent. Of course, there are also spreadsheet files that are native to spreadsheet applications. .ods is the open document spreadsheet format, which is an open file format that you'll commonly find used in free and open source applications such as LibreOffice. There are also proprietary formats such as .xls or .xlsx used by Excel. Personally, I prefer to use free and open source applications and formats such as .ods. JavaScript object notation or JSON is also considered machine readable even though it's not a tabular representation of data. Its known structure still makes it easy to work with data stored as a JSON. And lastly, we have data stored in databases, which will almost always be easy to extract, analyze, and present as long as you know the language to use. But what about PDFs? As you may be aware, or as you may have experienced, PDFs have become a really common way to share data and information. But PDF documents are generally not considered machine readable, although there are now applications that make it possible to directly extract and even process tabular data from PDFs and images, they are not as easy as how to do it with spreadsheets. It's still fairly difficult for an ordinary person to directly compute for a sum or average from a table stored in a PDF. With that said, in a perfect world, all the data we work with will be machine readable by default. Unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. Most of the time, your work with data will require you to convert files from machine-readable formats into machine-readable ones. This includes activities such as extracting a table from a PDF. There are, of course, applications such as Tabula and Excalibur, which can help you automate the process. You might also need to get a table from a web page using web scraping tools. One of the easiest ways to do this is using the import HTML command in Google Sheets, but there are other more advanced ways, such as using web scraping tools and libraries like Beautiful Soup in Python. And of course, we can't forget about manually encoding data from a report or a document into a spreadsheet. Even in a world that's full of automation, this happens more often than you might think. When doing manual encoding or digitizing of data, we have to be very careful as this isn't only time consuming and tedious, but it's also error prone. So why is machine readability so important? One, it makes your life working with data that much easier. Consider this scenario. Juan and Pedro, persons of similar skill and capabilities, are both tasked with analyzing the procurement activities of procuring Entity A for the past 10 years. Juan is provided a PDF document containing the tables of A's procurement activities, while Pedro was given the same dataset but in a spreadsheet format. Who do you think will be able to provide answers faster and more accurately, Juan or Pedro? I'd have my money on Pedro. In fact, I've given this same exercise to different groups of people in my data li literacy training events, and the groups with a spreadsheet were always faster and more accurate than the ones with a PDF. 
Second, machine readability is crucial to having open and reusable data. In addition to that, machine readable metadata is an essential component for publishing fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable data. While releasing data in PDF format is a good start, our quest for having open data shouldn't stop there. One of the most impactful things that a data provider can do is to release their data in a machine-readable open format such as a CSV or a .ods file. I'm pretty sure we've all had experience dealing with entities that say they have open data, but when we ask for the data, they actually provide us with PDFs, or worse, scanned images saved as PDFs. So please, if you're an agency or organization who says you are for open data, you are an open data organization, please release your data in machine-readable open formats and not just as PDFs. We'll talk more about open data in another video, but for now, remember that machine readability is a prerequisite for open data to be impactful. And that's it for today's video about machine readable data. Stay tuned for the next episode where we talk about tidy data. If you found this useful, give us a thumbs up, comment down below, share with friends, and subscribe. Bye!